This is Chicago's very own WGN News at 9. Not once today, but twice. A field of dreams at Wrigley Field. After a dramatic doubleheader, the Cubs clinch the National League Central Division. As fans flock to Wrigleyville to celebrate the win, all eyes are now on Atlanta. A beautiful sight for Chicago Cubs fans tonight. The marquee at Wrigley Field featuring some of the Cubbies' most memorable moments. Good evening, everyone. I'm Steve Sanders. And I'm Jackie Bang. We have extensive coverage for you tonight on the Cubs. Their dramatic win. Let's go right to WGN's Rich King and start the wrap-up. Not easy for the Cubs, but they made it, overcame a lot of adversity all year long. Injuries, a cork bat controversy with Sammy Sosa overcame the Cardinals and the Astros to win their first division title since Don Zimmer's team back in 1989. The Cubs in the playoffs for the first time since 1998 when they won the wild card. Game two, Cub fans as always believing that this is their year and they get things done. The bottom of the first, Sammy with a long home run the center, a mammoth shot in the, over the shrubbery. One nothing Cubs. Wow, what a blast. Then in the fourth, it was Kenny Lofton on defense. A sensational over-the-shoulder catch. His back to the infield makes the grab out there in center field. Then in the ninth inning, Dave Veers on the scene. Jose Hernandez, the ex-Cub, a double play ground ball. And the celebration was on. The Cubs win 7-2 and clinch the National League Central Division title. Andy McPhail, a very happy man, as the rest of the Cubs are today. Also happy man, as we go back live to Wrigley Field, is Dan Rohn, who's had a chance to dry out there from all that champagne in the locker room, man. <laughs> yeah, Rich, now we're just sticky. We're not wet anymore, we're just sticky. But uh, uh, things have quieted down some here in the neighborhood. Uh, it was a raucous celebration, though, here at Wrigley Field. Uh, not unlike uh, the one in 1998 when they took the wild card, but uh, this was the first time the Cubs had ever won a division championship at home. And in the locker room after the game, we were the first ones in there, and there was a lot of champagne flying around in there. A lot of things happened to us. We stay there, we're surviving, and now we got the division for the first time. Man, Sammy, after Thursday night, it seemed like it was going to be a struggle. All of a sudden, it happened so fast. Believe it. When you... <laughs> it's so real. I love Chicago. You know, we're filled with obstacles, but these guys overcame every obstacle that we had. It's a dream that when he got here, wasn't it? That's exactly right. You guys deserve it. I mean, what a year. It's been great. I mean, we, we, we battled through a lot of stuff this year, and uh, a lot of adversities were, were thrown our way, and we were able to get past them and stick together as a group and as a team, and, and uh, today we were able to come out and get the job done. Thank Dusty, Tim, everybody to get me over here because, you know, I mean, to believe in me, you know, to bring me over here so we can have the team and... Uh, this is unbelievable. We battled. I mean, we battled the whole year. We, you know, everybody's counting us out, but they, we stayed close enough, and it's just a wonderful thing. Just excited, you know. We, we've been here for a long time, and do, you know, we fighting for this and all year long, and we are where we're going to be. What are the chances of winning, sweeping a doubleheader and them losing in Houston? Huh? Well, the chances were, were definitely not in our favor, but uh, you know, we came out to play today, and luckily we did it. How's it feel now feels that it's good. over? It feels good now it's over, but. Uh, we we'll celebrate tonight, but we got some work to do, so. Well, that's okay. You guys have sure earned it. I mean, what a season. It's been a long season, you know, and everybody talks about how it's, you know, oh, boy. It's, uh, it's a sprint, or uh, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So, uh, like I said, it's been long. We've been up and down, and we're just having a blast while we can. I really have to tip my hat to the other teams, especially St. Louis and Houston. They really play great. I made it tough. I mean, it was great for baseball to see a race like this. We were very fortunate. The one thing I did know is I knew from day one we had the right manager. And, uh, and my respect for him just grew and grew every week. We never had an adverse situation that he didn't feel we could overcome. Coaches are the hardest working guys I've ever been around, and uh, it's a great bunch of guys in this clubhouse. We've got a bunch of winners. We might not have the best overall team, you know, talent-wise, but I tell you what, you've won it all together, and, and we got a heck of a ball club here. Well, there's no disputing that. A uh, bunch of winners is right, and Jim Henry got a lot of the kudos for what's happened out here uh, the entire season. Henry, the guy who isolated Dusty Baker as the man he wanted to manage this team that went out and got him. Also, a couple of key trades uh, in the offseason last year to get Eric Karros and Mark Wajalanik from the Dodgers. And then during the season, he raided the Pirates for Aramis Ramirez and Kenny Lofton and Randall Simon, and everything just fell into place. The Cubs... Probably thought they'd have a chance to wrap this up tomorrow, Rich, but it happened a lot sooner than that. 
It happens on Saturday. Now their pitching rotation is set for the playoffs. We'll talk much more about that later on in sports. But a terrific afternoon and evening here at Wrigley Field tonight. Dan, a quick question for you. You cover the team on the road, of course, in Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. And this is a team that won this thing in September. A sensational month. I believe 21-7 and seven or something like that for the month. This is no back-end situation. They went out in September and won this thing the way it should be won. Well, that's right. If I'm not mistaken, there were six games over 500 when September began. And I think they're 12 games over 500 for the month. So when the chips were down, when the pennant race uh, really started to heat up, and when the championship was on the line, that's when these guys played their best mm -hmm. baseball. And we all know they have a terrific pitching staff, but there's a lot of timely hitting going on here, too. And it was a true team effort that got this championship run mm -hmm. done here today. Okay, Dan, thanks. I'll see you a bit later on. Dan Rohn at the ballpark. And again, much more coming up in sports, complete coverage, and much more analysis about that. Why this game was such a big win, the second game, because it oh, sets yeah. up the pitching for the Atlanta series. We'll talk about that later. Well, on. it's funny yeah. you mentioned last yeah. night. I mean, we were, I think we were, a lot of us were surprised with a doubleheader that they would win Take two both times. The, the Decisively. Odds, the odds are enormous against that. I was talking to some of the players, uh, Sean Estes, saying, the odds are so much against that those three things happening, Houston losing in the Cubs. <laughs> but that's baseball. Just when you think you know the game, it comes up and bites you and does something different. And that's what makes it such a great game, and that's why people uh, like it so much, and that's why people follow it, because it's, mm -hmm. it's crazy. It's a crazy situation. <laughs> Don't you love it? And amazing. Right. Amazing. Happy how crazy all... tonight, <laughs> not sad crazy. <laughs> Thank amazing you. how it all came together. Thank you, Rich. For the first time in five years, Cub fans don't have to wait until next year for playoff action. It's a long overdue party, and we're out tonight checking out the celebrations. Let's start out with Randy Salerno live inside the friendly confines. Randy. They don't even have to wait until tomorrow like many people thought they were going to have to. You know, bottom line, when it comes to the Cubs, the players, well, they come and go over the years, but the fans, the fans stay the same. And if there wasn't a real close relationship between the fans and this new group of players here, well, there sure is now. The faces of the fans say it all. Years of frustration, erased, at least for a while anyway. This is the next year that never seems to come. The most valuable off-season pickup never swung a bat, and these fans know it. Oh, this is awesome, man. This is, this is the best. This is it. We're going. Bring out Atlanta. Maddox, you're done. We're going all the way, baby. Winning pitcher Matt Clement holding down the Pirates and holding up his young son is just one of many players who know Cubs fans deserve this. Oh, the crowd's unbelievable. They've been picking us up for two months. And, uh, you know, to be able to come out here and as loud as they are and, and they stuck with us all, the, all these years, but all this whole season, it's just been so much fun. And, you know, we're going to celebrate and get ready to roll. These people deserve it. They've been with us all year. It's been a long year with a lot of different stuff happening, so uh, it's a blast, and I'm just glad that we can do it here. The crowd stayed for at least an hour after the game, and the players stayed out there as well, rewarding the fans for their decades of support with a taste of champagne, Sosa, and the others spraying the bleachers. Sammy, how about these fans today? Unbelievable. They're lovely. They're very nice. Tremendous support. You know, doesn't get better than me. This is, thank you, God, and, you know, everybody that, uh, you know, support us through the year. It's awesome. Are you going to save any of that for the Brewers? Get oh, we might have sent him a case or two for what they did for us, so. <laughs> many here didn't think Milwaukee would beat Houston once, let alone twice. After all, Wrigley's been a field of nightmares over the years. Now, even the governor feels it's time to dream. I've been coming here since I was seven years old. And you know, every single year the Cubs would break your heart, you'd fall in love with them more. But now we've made some history, and I feel real good about this team. I think this is just the beginning of bigger and better things. You know, I think I speak for most fans when I say we're going to need a couple of days just to relax here uh, after the way this last uh, week or so has gone. And the fact is, this was one celebration, but imagine if they win 11 more games, what a World Series championship would be like here. We can dream, I guess. Let's check in with WGN's Chuck Coppola, who talked to fans and observed what happened outside Wrigley Field once this one was over. Chuck? 
Well, Randy, uh, outside uh, Wrigley Field, there was some concern that uh, the streets and the celebration might uh, turn into something a little out of control, but that really wasn't the case. The crowd did take the streets for a couple of hours at Clark and Addison, but as you can see behind me, the police have retaken the streets, and the Saturday night crowd is, for the most part, on the sidewalk. After this afternoon and this evening, spontaneous display of unbridled joy. Cubs win. Beneath the sun-washed sign at Clark and Addison, more than 40,000 Cubs fans spilled into the streets. It is the best thing ever to happen to the city. Right now, right here. I got off my couch and jumped on the bus and came down here just to be with everybody today and celebrate the moment that I wish my dad was here for. You know how that goes. Everybody out there who lost a dad who didn't make it, let's remember them because this is the year for our dad. Police horses stood by, and extra police blocked traffic from entering the immediate area. We blacked off the streets so they, so they could uh, enjoy themselves in the streets, and we'll open them up in a little while. One person was arrested for assaulting an usher inside the park. Two more were arrested outside the park for disorderly conduct. But for the most part, they pounded on windows, danced, and took pictures to savor the moment. I've been praying to the team for 16 years, for 16 years now. Well, it was just our time. He finally came to listen. The Cubs are awesome. Oh my God, I lost my virginity to the Cubs. Yes. Okay. Police are con to continuing to uh, direct traffic here at Clark and Addison. Uh, we've seen maybe a couple of arrests this evening, but considering the crowd was more than 40,000, that's not too bad. Outside Wrigley Field, I'm Chuck Copeland, WGN News. Oh, Chuck. <laughs> Even people at work were watching the boys at Wrigley Field today. The men at the fire station on Waveland Ride across from Wrigley Field kept one eye on the television and one eye on the job. Firefighter John Sampson says working at this station is ideal. But what's good about sitting here is you can you keep an eye on the scoreboard. We get a feel of the, and being here for so long, you know what a base hit according to the cheers. You know what a, a double is. You can tell a double, a triple, a home run. It's pretty obvious. But it's kind of like having surround sound. You know, so you don't need to be inside. We got the TVs here, instant replays. You know, oh yeah, it's it's a it's a nice place to be. And Sampson may have helped the fans out the last two times the Cubs were in the playoffs. He painted a World Series sign for them, and they lost. Today, he didn't paint that sign. <laughs> Still chuckling over a kid in the blue <laughs> tank top. Right across the street from Wrigley Field, hundreds of fans watched the Cubs clinch the playoffs at the Cubby Bear. That's where WGN's Juan Carlos Van Hool joins us live in the middle of all the celebration. Juan Carlos. Well, Steve, we're inside the Cubby Bear. As you can see, I'm surrounded by hundreds of fans out here. As you can see, the party's still going on inside. You know, if you didn't have a ticket to go inside Wrigley Field, this was the next best thing. Seconds before the win, fans in the Cubby Bear were relatively subdued. But when their team became the NL Central champions, it was pandemonium. Hundreds of people who couldn't get into the ballpark flocking to the Cubby Bear to watch the doubleheader on big screen TVs, including this guy who's about to get married. He brought his bachelor party along. We got nothing better than a bachelor party and the Cubs win the division the same day. It's a perfect present. After the win and the crowd was literally jumping inside. Outside, those leaving the game trying to make it into the bar. We gonna take them in as they go out. It's just amazing how many new friends you can make in this huge party, all for the Cubs. Who knows when the celebration will end tonight, but there'll certainly be more parties as the Cubs go to the playoffs. Because this team is absolutely fantastic. Sammy Sosa, Moises Alou, the starting pitching staff that we have. This is the time for the Cubs. Next year is right now. All right, back here live at the Cubby Bear, and as you can see, the party still going strong out here. 
tomorrow, as many folks will not have a ticket for the game tomorrow, well, the party will be going on here again. We're live at the Cubby there, Juan Carlos Von Hul, WGN News. All right, we have much more coverage for you on the Cubs clinch tonight on WGN. Straight after the news, we will have an in-depth look at our hometown team in our special report, Push for the Playoffs. That's tonight right here on WGN. Haven't seen anything like that since those great <laughs> Bulls teams of the 90s. You know? Oh, my goodness. It's great to celebrate sure again. Sure is. Do you remember the last time the Cubs made it to the playoffs? Coming up, we'll take a walk down memory lane to find out what other years the Cubs made their mark. And just two days until the Bears take to the field in Chicago. Today, the city celebrated the grand reopening at Soldier Field. Did you know Cub fans have another reason to celebrate? Tomorrow is Ron Santo Day, proclaimed by Governor Blagojevich. Ron was in the booth for WGN Radio, celebrating today's division clinching win by the Cubs. His number 10 will be officially retired by the team tomorrow. Ron joined the Cubs in 1960. He played for the Cubs for nearly 14 years before finishing his career with the White Sox. Ron hit 342 home runs over his career. He was a five-time Gold Gloves third baseman, and he played on nine All-Star teams. Elated Cub fans said today's clincher is great for the city, and after 14 years, winning a division title is nothing but great. Cubs fans are known for saying, wait till next year, <laughs> as they've yearned for a title. Just look at their postseason history. The 1906 Cubs made it to the World Series only to lose to crosstown rivals the White Sox. But one year later, the Cubs became world champs, defeating the Detroit Tigers. They'd do it again in 1908. Consecutive World Series wins. When the Cubs moved to their new home in Wrigley Field in 1916, most fans got to the game by horse and buggy. Having a car back then was reserved only for the very rich. From 1910 to 1945, the Cubs returned to the World Series seven times, only to lose each time. A crowd of well over 54,000 is on hand to see this colorful opening game of the 1945 baseball classic. The 1945 World Series was against the Tigers, who defeated them four games to three. It took nearly 40 years before Cubs fans could cheer about another pennant win. The Cubs beat Pittsburgh, but the Padres stopped them after two games at Wrigley. Then came 1989. You talk about a mass of happy humanity. A win over Montreal sent the Cubbies to face the Giants, but that matchup ended in a heartbreaking defeat, four games to one. Nine years later, He's waiting. He's got it. the Cubs are in the playoffs. The Cubs win. Wrigley Field erupted with a win over Dusty Baker's Giants. The Cubs won the wild card slot to take on the Braves. And that's fresh in the memory of most of us. The Braves went on to shut out the Cubs three games to zero, but that won't happen again, I'm sure. Your live Illinois lottery drawing is coming up next. So first, a look at Cub fans flocking to souvenir stands to pick up a piece of history. And also, the sights and sounds of this dramatic day. A standing room only crowd in Chicago. It's a good day for a doubleheader. <laughs> Mom, send tickets. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Been waiting a long time. This is our year. Let's go, Cubbies, number one. Woo, go Cubbies! By the end of this day, the clubs will, Cubs will be division champs, guaranteed. Go Cubs, go Cubs. I feel awesome. I am root for the Cubbies to win in Houston. Sucks. Yeah. 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 If they make it all the way, it'd be really cool. Sosa drives one in the air. Deep center, it's got a chance, gone! Number 40 for Sammy Sosa. 